are joining in now. Just going to get the a minute or two just to let the uh, participants number drop in and make sure that all the technology is working as it should be. Um, apologies to anybody if you hear any uh, noise or vibrations from the background. Um, the County Council have decided that now is the time to dig up the road. So we've got a, a lot of work happening outside the front. It was shaking a moment ago, but they seem to have, maybe they've had their lunch break. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll just give it a moment or two just to let everyone drop in. Hope everyone's doing well at the moment and you're not too badly uh, affected by the snow that we've got. We've had a threat of snow. There's lots and lots of snow given for days and days and it seems to come along, have a little flurry and disappear again. We've not had too much, but nice and British of us to talk about the weather. Right, I'm just going to jump in now straight into the webinar to get started. And again, if anyone misses the beginning, apologies uh, for that one. Um, we will be making a recording of this and sharing it afterwards. So anybody who wants to see us afterwards, or if you do miss the beginning, then feel free to catch the beginning and go back and watch it back at a later date at your leisure. So I'm going to actually I've just got a slide or a set of um, flip charts to my left. The wonderful world of online. Uh, I can do this, um, but I couldn't do it on a stage. Although I forgot to reset it. Lots of noise. So I'm just going to jump in straight in. So we've got the first part of this uh, webinar, just an intro really, uh, a little bit about me. I'm not going to spend too long about me. Uh, I tend to find that those tend to wander on to why I'm qualified to give you this information, but hopefully you'll see why during the session. And if not, then feel free to have a rant at me afterwards. But the idea is what you're going to get from me today. You should have had a worksheet as well sent out beforehand. If not, then apologies. I can get that sent over to you afterwards, um, but grab a pen and paper if you can. But what you're going to get from today, there'll be five tips with a reason why these tips are helpful. It may be that you've already started working on some of these areas anyway, but the idea would be that I'd hopefully share something which will make you think about things slightly differently. So you can see the potential different way you might be able to do something. But the idea is that you can get five tips without spending any money to help you to grow your business. Now the aim again is to, when it comes to this, there is that big elephant in the room, which you can see the, the picture there on the right is graphically illustrating that for you. But the caveat is that your time costs money. And I think I've covered this in many different webinars and articles before, that you need to make sure that when you're working in your own business, that your time is costing money to you. And what I would normally recommend is that you find a way to delegate the tasks out to someone or somewhere that's going to be cheaper than the hourly rate that you're trying to achieve. So for example, if you're trying to target a 50 pound an hour uh, rate with your clients, then you can delegate a task out that costs 10 or 15 pounds an hour, then that might be a really good use of your time. But this webinar is going to assume that that's not the case. That elephant can be shown to the door and moved away because ultimately this is to try and aim at those people that don't have the cash flow to pay for someone else to do things for them. So if you could again, grab that pen and paper in the worksheet, if you've got it, grab that too, and we'll get started on to tip number one. So this one is around trying to keep clients warm. There you can see a lovely little dog all snuggled up nice and warm. And when I say keeping clients warm, it is that part of, and we're into the why, it's that conscience, trying to get into the clients that you've already got or the uh, clients that you're looking to gain, is trying to get into their conscious mind to help them and keep them supported while they're in a period where they can't potentially use your services and do the things that you do. Ultimately, things are going to come back at some point, depending on what industry you're in, things are going to return at some point and you'll get some sort of normality. But what you need to be doing there is building that level of trust with those clients or potential clients that you can build that level of trust to help you to build a pipeline to help you to get those bus the business when they're ready to spend the money, if that makes sense. So some examples there would be you could build a pipeline with doing things on social media, uh, emailing, even webinars like I'm doing here. This is my way of communicating with people when I can't actually get out and do face to face like I used to. But then when you're doing this, when you're doing the keeping warm part of this, it's then about making sure that this is keeping people warm without the attempt to sell. So if you were to create an email, I guarantee that I don't send more than one email a month to anybody who's on my mailing list. And if anybody starts to sell lots and lots and send emails once a day, you've seen that, haven't you? A daily email comes out five times a week, six times a week, wherever it might be, you certainly get switched off quite quickly. But the idea about the warming aspect is to try and do something which is giving that value to your clients or those potential clients to help them to, um, to gain things themselves. 
Examples here might be, so from a travel perspective, it might be that you offer tips. So there are certain, there's lots out there at the moment. In terms of Brexit, will I need a new passport? Will I need to get visas, jabs, those sorts of things. Then you've got the COVID side of things. So am I able to travel to this country or not? Will I have to isolate or not? So there's lots of information that you can give people for free that will help them, but also help you to become a trusted partner. You can then start to build that trust as an agent. You might then turn around and think, actually, you know what? If I can do these things um, and give this information, that's the first person I'm going to go back to. So they start asking questions. You might ask them questions. When would you like, be likely to travel again? It's just an open question. When might you be likely to travel again? It's not just asking, dipping, uh, putting a dipstick in there, isn't it? And similarly, if you do want to travel again, are you likely to travel in the UK or abroad? Those kinds of things might really help your clients or existing clients to help you get where you need to get. Similarly, from an events perspective, the events last year were absolutely hammered. The corporate events, almost none happened. Big footballing events didn't take place. Then they did, when they did come back, they had a very minimum amount of fans in the, in the stadiums. Weddings, those sorts of things just don't happen. So what could you be doing there? Again, the client that I'm working with around um, weddings, it's, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to see when someone just comes and cancels, because ultimately they see that their wedding isn't gonna happen, they've canceled the event. But if you start doing the keeping warm aspect, it means that you're likely to then get the wedding to be transferred, postponed to a later date. When those changes were implemented, uh, my client found out that actually the, 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 the people were still staying in touch and they were still looking to um, get married, but it was just at a later date. And again, once you've started to build that level of trust, you can offer tips and guidance around events. Things are getting booked up already. So this summer's getting really booked up. Next summer's already starting to get really booked up. So it's then starting to look for different venues and trying to find out what they might like. But again, you're keeping people warm. You start to look, what's your small wedding look like? What does your medium wedding look like? What does your large wedding look like? So you can start to tailor things to suit them. And again, from a florist perspective, you know, the, the event side of things, Valentine's Day, how many here have actually gone into a shop a day or two days before uh, Valentine's Day to go and collect the flowers. But the florists mostly are shut now, so you can't do that. So how do they then get out there? How do they do things instead to help them to um, grow their business? Because ultimately, one of the busy busiest days of the year, they're closed. So then it's about keeping people warm, making sure you're doing things up front and in advance, similar to the events from a florist perspective. The big events from, uh, from summer will be the weddings, but if weddings aren't there, they can't make the money from that. But you can start to do things now, warm people up, offer tips and guidance as you can see outside weather is starting to turn take a bit of a well i say the upward turn it's coming towards spring there are things like cleaning greenhouses getting seeds ready planting bulbs those sorts of things the tips and the guidance that you can give without actually selling anything so now what i'd like to do now then so again writing things down is the important part from this one uh, this is one of the biggest ones for you to take today they're keeping warm so what things could you do write down now a note about something that you might be able to do differently something that you could implement that will help you to keep your clients warm and when you do that please um, making sure that you, you look at something you can do on a maybe monthly basis something that will help you to, to keep them, them clients warm then we're going to look at when we might do it like i said monthly is a good idea for that one and on the next one we'll see number two uh, this is something that i recommend that you all do weekly and it is very very difficult i think some people find networking very difficult to do uh, in a face-to-face -face environment anyway and again for me i find it really frustrating when you walk into a networking event and the first thing that everyone tries to do is just sell and sell and sell at everyone so that is an even bigger switch off when it happens online so when people moved from an online uh, sorry from a face-to-face -face meeting to an online meeting people started to really struggle and didn't like it and people moved away but then over time people picked up and realized actually this is the way to network right now we don't really have a lot of choice when you then look back a lot of those online meetings have now been in place for almost 12 months. Certainly the networking group that I run on a Thursday morning, it's, you know, my aim is here, it's two hours of people's time. I want them to enjoy it and get something from it. And for everyone to feel that there's a reason they turned up and invested two hours of their business time in that meeting each week. And iteration is happening. Every single event will iterate and move forward and do things slightly differently. So if you don't do any networking at the moment, then please go out there and seek some. And if you do do some networking, again, go and look at some of those other networks that you used to attend. What are they doing online? For some of those events that you know you, you maybe shied away from some time ago, or there are other new ones that have popped up, then go and find them. But then ultimately, the same with this one for networking across all areas, whether it's um, the networking that you don't do already or that you want to do, it's the following up with people that's the important piece. As I said previously, just going and selling and selling and selling at people is really difficult and people aren't likely to want to do much. It's that follow up afterwards. And a follow up can be a simple thing like a personalized LinkedIn message, just connecting and growing your network. Ultimately, that's the aim is that you're going to expand and move around and making sure that you're, you're building your network with the people that are good for you and that you're good for them.
And that again, the reason why, why might you want to do this? So it's again, people do buy from people. It's not the only way that people buy. People will buy um, just by basically seeing a review, seeing something else. But ultimately, if you know someone that's had a service from somebody else, it just tends to work better and work, works in people's favor if you get that personal referral and recommendation. Now that we're online, ultimately, that's the way that people are still doing this and still business is being passed around. There's still business out there. There's still business to be had to get some networking in you. Things like this. Webinars, they're great as a one way. And I don't have the interaction with people. You can, you know, again, feel free during the meeting or during the webinar to drop questions into the Q&A box or into the chat box. Um, they're being monitored by uh, Jordan from Creations. So anybody's got any that feedback, then please feel free to drop them in there. But again, it's one way. But again, it's good for consuming. It's good for learning. It's good for understanding. But it isn't that two-way networking event uh, that you can also find out at the moment. Now, um, the thing I'd like you to write down, so what networks then can you try? Just again, writing down what things you might be able to try that are slightly different to what you do already. And again, I didn't cover in the beginning, but one of the reasons why you do write these things down is, it gives you that checkpoint. It gives you a reference point to look at. When you've written something down, for some reason, it opens something in your brain, some sort of different mental aspect comes to this when you start to think, actually, now I've written it down, it also comes to the universe. And similarly, if you do write something down and you can take some notes on it, you might come back in a week or two and go, oh, you know what, I still was going to do that, but you didn't do it, so why not? And then it helps you to then move on and do something new. So you can write down what networks could you potentially try. Moving on to now number three, uh, the social media side of things. So I apologise again, I think the English isn't quite right on that one, but if you do look really closely in the uh, screen you'll see there, it looks like it's a Greek sign, so we can forgive them a, that a little bit, I guess, but ultimately the message is there. Some people go after that aspect of all we need is just more likes, more connections, and that's it, just more numbers. It doesn't work, though, does it? I mean, you've seen that. If you've got a, um, some a social media where you've had lots and lots of interactions, but there's not been any follow-up off the back of it, it it's a bit um, disappointing. And again, someone who's got 10, 15, 20,000 uh, followers on LinkedIn, is that going to be any more um, impactful than someone who's got 650? Who knows? Uh, likely no. But the, the idea is that you need to be speaking to the right people, the right people for you. And with the social media side of things, what I'd absolutely recommend here is that you've got some form of strategy behind the social media that you're creating. Don't spend all of your time just getting your phone out and just constantly working and looking through social media. There needs to be a purpose and a reason why you're doing the things that you're doing. And again, it's the interaction and making sure that you're able to comment and like and interact on people's posts rather than just creating all of your own and not doing any more on the back of it. If you don't have a strategy at the moment, the first strategy that I recommend that you do do is to do something. And then measure it because again if you've got some strategy in place which you're then taking some data from to see what time of day was good for me to post what kind of posts got better interaction was it a question was it a statement was it the one with a video on it was it a picture what was the best thing for me once you've started to get that data coming back in you can then start to tweak and evolve there as well if again if you don't know what strategy you've got or what what a strategy might look like and how it might work then again the likes of uh, creations so again jordan and claire and um, support me with these webinars they're more than happy to give any free guidance and a few tips on uh, how you might want to put a strategy in place for your business. So again, there's help out there. What I would say though is that it's not going to be uh, one size fits all. And if everyone knew the answers of how to nail social media, then we'd all be doing it, wouldn't we? The algorithms change all the time. The social media companies are all in control. It's that ultimately it's, it's making their businesses bigger. So ultimately they're wanting to control things in the way that suits best for them. And we don't know what that is and they're not going to tell us. On top of that, it doesn't need to be perfection. And it's a shame, shameful thing, really, that you know, I could create five social media posts a week, post them all, and someone might see none of them, and somebody might see all five. It's just the way that things work. So don't worry about fretting over making sure that every single post that you create is absolutely perfect every time, because then you'll spend all your time procrastinating and not actually creating any content. So making sure you've got content out there that's going out there regularly, that meets your strategy, is the thing you should be going after. And again, when it comes to the perfection side of things, don't try to almost necessarily jump on every single new trend and topic. I think when we went into the coronavirus situation, uh, TikTok was up and coming. It was a new, um, new bit of social media that people hadn't really used much, and it's exploded. It's, gone, it's, it's grown really, really quickly, and there's a lot of people using it. For me, I'm not a clue how TikTok works, and I've, I've shied away from it. But on the same side of that, we've now seen the introduction of Clubhouse, which again, it's got a really, really big following. It's, it's growing really quickly, but other people are saying it's a massive consumption of my time. It's taking a lot of time. Fortunately, again, I'm Android, so I don't get the opportunity to even see what the fuss is about. But it's one of those things that if you try to get onto every sort of every every new trend and try to do everything perfect all the time, you'll spend a lot of your time 
basically being consumed by social media rather than letting social media uh, work for you. So what should you do for this one? Again, it's the monthly aspect is what I'd like you to do from a strategy perspective. And I think most people recommend that you post at least once a day. So what, what, what I would say is why would you do that? What would be the reasons for you creating social media? And it is around that conscience side of things. But in this side of things, it isn't just getting into the conscience side of your clients or prospective clients. It's also, also the conscience awareness for yourselves to make sure that you are in control of social media rather than social media being in control of you. Get in and do the thing that you need to do with it. It's ultimately there to grow your business. So help make sure that social media is working for you in that way. So the thing I'd like you to write down then, the thing I'd like you to take away would be um, when is the time you're going to allocate to create that strategy? It only needs to be like an hour or a couple of hours a week um, or a month even where you sit and say, right, this is the strategy that I'm going to have this month. This is where I'm going to go. So when, please, would you be able to write that time down so you can give yourself the time to create the strategy? Now I'm going to move into... I'm going to flip my chart over. Number four. So testimonials. And this is a wonderful thing, isn't it, really? Um, so we've done, uh, you know, this is a, a British thing. You've done a great job, but, and then you stop at that point. You've done a great job for somebody, but they haven't left you some feedback. They haven't given you the review that you wanted to, and you don't really follow it up. And the number of times I have conversations with my clients and say, well, so why didn't you ask someone to give you that feedback? Oh, well, I don't really like to. It's just a typical thing. I don't know why we're so bad at doing it, but we don't. I'm the same. I, I don't like to ask for good feedback, but it does work. It really helps. And again, coming on to that reason why. And it is, again, some people will say that these aren't as good as they could be. They're not as impactful. I think I actually watched a webinar once before where someone said that forget testimonials and just write a book because then you become the true expert on something, which I kind of get the point. But ultimately, they do help. It doesn't necessarily need to be that that's the only way that you're going to do business. If you don't have testimonials, you can still win business. But ultimately, it's that personal referral that's always going to be the one that's going to sell best for you. But stories do tell. If you can tell some stories, then ultimately people will hopefully uh, want to do business with you. So again, how can you do that? How can you get out there and speak to someone and say, look, how, how can you leave me some feedback? And it is easy to do. I mean, my, my, start, uh, my story that I like to tell people is that what I do isn't complicated but it's the way that I ask the questions and it's the way that I hold people accountable that makes a difference. And I'm upfront about that. I said, look, when you look at my website and when you look at the tools and the techniques that I use, some of these things have been around 50, 60, 70 years. I've got my slight different take on that. And some of this stuff will go back to Roman times. But ultimately, um, if I say that to everybody, it doesn't mean as much as if someone says it for me. If you look at some of the testimonials that are on my website, that's exactly what people are saying is, or one of them says, it even says, it isn't rocket science, but it makes a difference when someone holds you accountable and someone says to you, why haven't you done that thing? That's the difference. So if someone else says it for me, it makes a big deal. Ultimately, it needs to be, again, the referral goes with this as well. So making sure that you've got the thank you from somebody is great, but it's the referral that goes with it that makes a difference. But when you think about these, when you think about testimonials, if you haven't really received them and you should be going and following them up, think about it from your perspective as well. Is there a situation where you've recently had a good service from somebody, but you haven't left the feedback? Google are making this really easy now. I don't know if it works for everybody else, but for me, I get a notification every so often. You just went to this place. What did you think? So they're asking for you to do that. But then the other side of it, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, even on your website, they're all great places to leave a testimonial. But again, going and asking people to leave them for you isn't so easy to do. But if you get out there and do it, it will make a big difference. Similarly, you can leave them. So go and leave them for people. Go on to, the, then, go on to Google, leave the review for somebody and let someone know if they've done a good job for you. And what I say again here, monthly is the one that I'd like to go through on this one. Every month, have a check in and think, you know, who can I actually ask? Who can I go and speak to and say, look, would you mind uh, leaving me a testimonial? And then, so the writing down for this one, the bit I'd like to write, please, would be, who could you ask for a testimonial? Or on the flip side, is there anybody that you've recently spoken to that you would like to um, like to leave a testimonial for? If you could do that, that's, that would be really wonderful. So on to number five. So again, this one is a, a sort of a slight, slightly rebadged version of something I've done before. So I don't want people to think I'm trying to just copy and paste my previous webinars. I always like to try and think of new content, but I'm really, really quite keen on the downtime aspect of this. But your tip number five is just to try new things. But one of those new things I would love you to try and do from here is taking some downtime. And the reason for that is that some part of your brain unlocks when you do switch off properly. It helps when you take the time out to rent, mentally recharge, it really will make a difference to what you're doing. 
And it's the same thing there, and I've, I've come across this on and off switch mentality that I'm speaking to people about at the moment. And that is, when you're focusing on your business, if you're switched on and you're focusing in on your business all of the time that you're on, and then when you're off, you literally do switch off and you make sure that you're not working on your business when you're switched off, it makes a big difference. And again, the social media constantly nagging at you that you're, you know, you've finished at the five o'clock, you're done, you go home, social media kicks off. There's a visitor that's been invited to your networking event. There are things to be done. It makes it very, very difficult for you to then switch off properly. But if you do, the rewards are there. It's very, very easy to just stay sort of in the middle state partway through each time. But when you do switch off, that's when the mentality unlocks and it allows you to think slightly differently. The amount of times I've stood in the shower and had some great ideas, whether it's the, the water falling on my head, or whatever it might be, but when you're switched off, some of these great ideas just flow out of you. And that's the sort of thing you're trying to do here. Creating that time to then uh, think about things differently will mean that you've then got the ability to try new things in your business. So we talked about here some new strategy. Strategizing about what you need to do is a difficult thing to do sometimes. So if you can sit here and think of, well, what can I do slightly differently? Again, if taking the data, what did the data say? What did we do here that we can do differently next time around? And when you're starting to get that information, you should start to post, you might start posting slightly different strategies on social media. You might implement different follow-up techniques. You might change the way that you do your email. So if you're now still unsure about what you might want to try and what you might, what you might want to do differently, I'm now going to attempt something I've not done yet, which is jumping out of the slides and onto a screenshot of the tool. So this should now be showing you, and again, for those that hopefully you can see that, uh, there is a, uh, a printed version here as well. This is one of the tools that I've created. It's a PDF I can give anybody if you want it to have a, have a um, give me a shout, and you can have a copy of this as well. But this chart is here or to just take the tasks that you do every day. And there should be the top section, which should be the things that you love to do, and then the things that you don't really like to do at the bottom. So if you're sitting here looking at your tasks, thinking, well, hang on a minute, how can I do things differently? Just a bit right now, the tasks that you do, first of all. Those tasks that you love to do, there's potentially a problem that's lurking. That you love doing it, it might mean you're spending a long time doing it because you love it so much. So again, if you want to try something new, try figuring out those things that you love to do. How can you make that faster? How can you make it more efficient to give yourself more time to do some of the other things that you potentially don't like to do? Because we all like to play in that top box. The things below, what I'd normally say on the right-hand side of the, uh, the chart there, the tasks that you don't like but you aren't very good at, they're the ones I'd absolutely recommend that you move out somebody else and try and get somebody else to do that for you. But again, for the purposes of this webinar, it's not trying to be that we're trying to move things away. You need to just find ways to do them yourself. So again, when we come back to that tip number five, trying to do new things, the new things here would be finding a way to take that things that you really aren't very good at and making it so that you are a bit better at it. Again, there's free tools and tips around that people are allowed to get hold of to go and have a look. So go and find a way to um, learn about making that thing that you don't like better. And similarly, the things that you don't really like, but you're quite good at. It might be that you can find a way there that you, you don't like doing it, but you know you're good at it when you get started. For me, it's mass documentation. I'm not a massive fan of that, but there's a way that I can find that I can get myself doing it. And for me, it's just getting started. So when you find those things that you don't really like doing, but you're good at, finding ways, the new things that you might be able to do there will be find, finding ways to get yourself started, get yourself doing it, to push that up more towards that doing what you love um, top section of the diagram. So once you've done those two things, you can start to figure out which ones you can do. Then that helps you to figure out, well, actually, when we move on to the new stuff, and let's see if we go back into the slides again. Oh, just a sec. Where are we? Nope. So we go back onto the slides. So when we come back to the trying new things, again, when you look at that task sheet, it might give you the opportunity to then figure out what you might have to do that's slightly different to give you the boost up that you might need. And again, the why there is that mental fatigue. You will tire. I'm starting to see a lot more people now are starting to get more tired a lot quickly, a lot more quickly over silly things now because we're in this situation that we've been in for a while, it's easy to burn out. The on and off switch, making sure that you're fully off and you're fully on, it does help with that, but you will start to get fatigued. So the writing things down thing, you got there the task sheet that I've just shared with you, but also if you could find a way that you can write down something else that you might want to test. And this is the thing, isn't it? Try something new, test it. If it doesn't work, don't do it again, but keep on testing and iterating. And that should take us to the end now. That's the end of the, the tips I've got for you today. So I'll move on to the, the any questions part of this. Um, I get off, I've got a couple that were preloaded when the worksheet went out and that Jordan's got to come into in just a second. If you're not already connected with me on LinkedIn, then feel free to use the QR code or take my details down there to connect with me on LinkedIn. Similarly on Facebook, I've got a page on there with a QR code, my phone number and email, should you want to follow up with me. 
um, what I do as well. So how you can work with me should you wish to. Again, I'm a business coach is what I do. Um, I help clients to do all this stuff. So those five tips I gave there, they're the freebies. They're the option number one, the freebie in, take the webinar, use that in your business. It doesn't cost you anything other than a bit of your time. On the same side of that, there was that tool, the do what you love tool. I've got a, um, a business planning tool that you can have for free as well. All those tools there are available. You can do it all yourselves. The second option would be that you can work with me and we can create a plan together. We just spend one day creating that business plan and then it's yours to go away and implement into your business. And the third way to work with me is that we do that business plan and then spend the next 12 months regularly checking in to make sure that you're actually going to deliver uh, what you've said in that business plan. So that's all of what I do. Hopefully this has been of help to you. Um, and we can now move into some questions, Jordan. Uh, yep, yeah, so we've had um, a couple and then we've had um, one person ask, would you be able to share the do what you love PDF file at the end of the session? Because it's a great idea. Yeah, no problem. So again, if I know who that is, I'll make sure they definitely get a copy of that straight after this. Um, yeah. I'll just send it along with the, or maybe we can actually add it to the thing for the monthly email as well, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, we can put it in the newsletter. On there as well. But if someone wants that now, then get me, let, let me know. The, first, the next email I'll send out will be the beginning of March. So I'll definitely make sure it's in the March email. Um, but if someone's like now, then please get or give me details and I'll get it over to you. Yeah, and then a couple more. So how do I build a social media strategy if I don't really know what I'm doing? Right, okay. Uh, so to create the, the social media strategy is, again, to ask some of the experts. Um, but again, it's very difficult um, for any expert to know exactly how social media will work. As I've said in the, in the previous part of this one, social media changes and evolves all the time. So don't try and ask lots of people the same questions because what you'll find there is that different opinions will mean you're still skewed and you're better to settle on something that you're going to try. But when you have tried something, just try anything. And when you have tried it, test it and make sure that your strategy is going to deliver, deliver you the results. Um, and again, I'll iterate that there's the slower burn to this. So with social media, you can't just expect to go from no followers to 700 followers overnight. It takes some time. It's a bit of a slower burn. Um, as I've said there, Jordan, you guys um, do provide free information to people as well to help with that strategy as well so if anybody needs to start on a strategy then certainly give creations a, a shout and find out thank you and we've had another one asked um will you be posted about this session on linkedin for us to comment on uh, i will be yeah so there'll be a, a follow-up and um, again one thing to um i do with creations is and there'll be um a link to this video for people to have any kind of interaction on there as well yeah Thank you. And just one more. Um, with testimonials, what is the best way to use them? So it's just to tell the story. And that's the point you need to be doing there. Hopefully during the webinar, you'll heard that there were some, some parts I brought into the webinar with um, clients that have given me feedback and clients that have given me some good, good stories and information. The idea is that it's to tell the story and it's to tell the story that works for you. So it might be that you've got your website. It could be that you're doing your meetings, your social media activity. It could be the, again, the networking. That you need to be making sure that you're telling people the story of why things work and why things work for them. Because ultimately it is that, again, partly people want to buy from people, but they want to hear that story too. So just telling the story is what your testimony should be doing for you. Um, so again, hopefully that some of the, my examples have come across in the webinar. And it isn't meant to be a sales job. I don't like it. I'm a bit of an anti-seller. So the idea is that if anybody wants to have additional information, they can have it. But I certainly won't be going after everybody with an aggressive look at how this works for you and how wonderful it could be. I hope that makes sense. Perfect. Yeah, that's all of the questions, Luke. Brilliant. So I'll just wrap up then. Thank you, everybody. Again, thank you, Jordan and Creations for helping and supporting and having this webinar for me. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming along and spending your time. Hopefully you found it useful. And if you do do this stuff already, it's giving you a potentially different slant on what you might be differently. Um, but again, I appreciate everyone for coming and hopefully see you on the next webinar.